Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris FX, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Corner Pin Studio to quickly and easily pin text to a wall inside of Resolve. Okay, so here we are in Resolve, and I have my original footage of this young woman walking down an alleyway. I wanted to use this footage because not only does it have a nice defined wall for us to attach text to, but she moves in front of it. So we'll get into some quick masking tips to really help sell this effect. I've also added my text image to the media pool. It should be noted that I created this simple text image in Photoshop. It's basically just text with a transparent background. Because we need to work with alpha mats, I recommend that if you're pinning text, you'll want to do this instead of using native resolve text, as it's significantly easier to get the results you're looking for. Ultimately, what I want to do is apply Corner Pin Studio, but there are a number of unique workflow specific issues that we need to look at. The first has to do with how Resolve handles compositing alpha mats. The second is how Mocha Pixel Chooser deals with masking. And the third is how to link up all the various nodes so that Corner Pin Studio is able to pull in the right sources. It's very important to take these into account before we begin compositing our text. Now because of the unique way in which Resolve handles its workflow, I'm going to want to make sure that the only thing I have in my timeline is my background clip. It may seem counterintuitive, but everything we do to set up this effect needs to be done before we pull in our text. In the Color tab, I'm going to add Corner Pin Studio to our node graph. Note that I'm not going to add it to an existing node, rather I'm going to simply drag it onto the stage and have it create its own node. In order to pull this effect off, we need to make sure that Mocha has access to our background layer. And that's where we come to our second workflow issue, masking. It's all well and good to motion track my text to the wall, but if we don't mask it out as she passes in front of it, the illusion is going to be broken. Now by default, Corner Pin Studio wants to composite the text as a foreground layer. This makes a logical sense. We have our background, and we want to add something on top of that. But if we want to be taking advantage of Mocha's powerful masking in addition to its tracking, we want to switch things around a bit. I want to change the workflow to apply to background. Then, I'm going to select Source B as my foreground insert layer. This will allow Mocha to access the background info in this node here, while allowing me to eventually pipe in my text, which we'll come to in a bit. With the correct workflow selected, I'm going to go to my Mocha Motion Tracker and launch the custom UI. Inside of Mocha, I have my two tracker elements, my search area, and my corner pin guide. This box represents each of the four points of my corner pin. Now your first thought may be to keep the search area and the corner pin connected. After all, we want the corner pin to match the movement of our motion tracker. But here's the thing. Mocha is a planar tracker, so it's tracking all the pixels within our search area. This is going to become a problem if we want our text on the wall, because as soon as she passes in front of it, Mocha will lose the track. So what do we do? Well, as I said, Mocha is a planar tracker, which means that as long as we track something along the same plane as our corner pin, we'll get the results we want. And as luck would have it, there's a window up here along the same plane as the wall I want to apply my text to. So I'll set my search area to track the movement of this window. My corner pin, I'm going to place against this wall. I can turn on the grid to make sure that it lines up nicely and evenly, tweaking it as necessary. When done, I'll hit track, and there you go. When satisfied, I'll hit Apply. Now since we haven't piped in our text yet, what I can do is I can turn on Show Motion Path to see Mocha's corner pin data. Just remember to turn that off before you render. What we want to do now is set up a way to mask out the text as she walks in front of it. To do this, I'm going to go down to Mocha Pixel Chooser. Now make special note that this is not the Mocha Motion Tracker that we just used. In fact, I'm going to close that group since we're done with it. Mocha Pixel Chooser will use the same power of Mocha Tracking, but allow me to mask out part of the effect. Now how detailed you want to get will naturally depend on the effect you want to achieve. You can go in, create roto masks for her arms, head, body, and track them individually. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to create a quick garbage mask that more or less follows the woman. To do this, I'm going to select my brush tool and quickly draw a shape that matches her body. When done, I'll click the arrow and create a mask. Next, I'll track forward, keeping an eye on the movement of her arms and pausing every so often to adjust the mask. While Mocha will not display the composited text because we haven't linked up the nodes, 
I do know that I plan to have it in this area. So I'm going to make sure that anytime she's positioned here, I keep the mask as tight to her as I can. I'll pause the track, select some points, and manually adjust. And I'll continue that until she's past the sign. When satisfied, I'll hit apply, and that's pretty much the basics of how to set up this effect. So let's pipe in our text so we can see what's really going on. What I want to do is drag my text image from the media pool onto my stage. This is going to create a mat node. Right click on it to bring up a menu and then go down to select mat. You'll want to select the text layer. Once that's done, connect the source and alpha outputs to the Corner Pin Studio inputs. This will allow Corner Pin Studio to assign our tracking and masking data directly to source B, which is our text image. When I scrub through, I see that my text has disappeared. So what's going on? Well, we just told Mocha that the effect is in this area. What I need to do is click Invert Mask here in the Pixel Chooser Mask group, and that will invert the effect, masking out the text only when she's in front of it. Now, if I need to make any adjustments, I can always jump back into Mocha and tweak the mask. However, the reason why I tracked and masked before piping the text is because if I were to launch Mocha while our text mat is connected, Mocha can't read our background. So if you want to make any changes, just remember to disconnect the mat source and alpha. Then you can jump back into Mocha and make any necessary tweaks. From here, I can open up my transform controls to make adjustments to the scale and translation. It's a lot easier to fine tune the position this way because regardless of any changes I make, it's going to maintain our motion tracking. When satisfied, I can scrub through and that's looking pretty great. And essentially, that's pretty much it. All that's left is to make a few final tweaks to really sell the effect. And the great thing is that Corner Pin Studio makes it easy to do that all within the effect itself. Let me show you. First, I'm going to come down and feather my mocha mask, and I'm talking ever so slightly, maybe a pixel or two. Any more, and you'll start to draw attention to the masking, and the effect is going to look really weird. Next, let's enable light wrap. This is going to reflect the luma from the background layer onto our foreground layer. Just nudge that up a bit to soften the edges of the text, making it look like it's part of the scene. Don't do too much or it's going to look too feathered. Lastly, these titles are really sticking out like a sore thumb, and I want to make them look like they're actually part of the wall. To do that, I'm going to open up the composite group and change the apply mode to overlay. When I play that back, We've quickly and easily added text to a wall within the scene. And while I did this with text, you can absolutely use another still image or another object by using the exact same steps. Now since these are titles, I can also enable drop shadow if I want them to pop off that surface. But as far as creating this effect inside of Resolve, that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care!